On Wednesday, Prime Minister Maliki wrote an op-ed for the New York Times. I was absolutely fascinated to read it because the, it was entitled, Have Patience With Us. And uh, I'm not going to have an opportunity to submit an op-ed to the New York Times and rebuttal, so this gives me a great opportunity to say some things that are on my mind and in my heart in response to the op-ed. Prime Minister Maliki, your words do not match your actions. Your desire to seek a vibrant and strong democracy is inconsistent with the treatment of not only your own citizens in Iraq, but the 3,000 refugees at Ashraf and Liberty. You come requesting assistance, military aid, to combat the extremist elements in your country, and we admit there are extremists in your country, Al-Qaeda and others. And your rationale for military aid is to combat them, but we take a look at history, Prime Minister Maliki, and you've used our arms, our training, our Humvees to actually assassinate and murder over a hundred members, a hundred of these refugees from the MEK. So one question is whether or not you are committed to eliminating extremism and terrorism, or if you're not a terrorist yourself. It's pretty remarkable, ladies and gentlemen, it is pretty remarkable, and there's sufficient evidence. It's indisputable. It's on video, inside reports, foreign press reports, and the like. There have been four attacks on defenseless individuals belonging to this group. Over a hundred and some killed in the most recent barbaric, outrageous, immoral assassination of 52 people, many of them with their hands tied behind their back, bullets between their foreheads, suggest to us, Prime Minister Maliki, you are not worthy of a visit to the White House, but since you're here, we have a message to you. Yes. No more aid, no more arms until you free the hostages secure the safety of the 3,000 men and women that remain at Camp Liberty, ensure their, self, their evacuation, and then come back and talk about arms and aid. Until then, we follow up with our friends on the Hill to make sure that neither the Foreign Relations Committee nor the Armed Forces Committee approves a single dime of assistance or a single weapon until you keep your promises. <laughs> and I think it's pretty audacious for you to come into this country and visit our White House and talk to our president about a strong and vibrant democracy when you have violated basic norms of any relationship any country should have and maintain if it seeks a long-term relationship and friendship with the, with the United States. You have broken your promise to us. You have broken your promise to these men and women of the MEK, and you have assassinated and murdered them. There will be no aid, there will be no arms until you keep your promises, release those refugees, and then come back and we'll talk about arms and aid. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, on many, many occasions, people have asked me, why do all of us feel so passionate about this particular issue? I think I speak for everybody, but I'm only going to speak for myself at this time. As someone who wore the uniform of this country a long, long time ago, I take a look at the transfer of arms from the MEK to our military in 2004 and the promise that the United States General representing this country and representing the President who was in the White House at that time made to these men and women. You give us your arms, your means to protect yourselves, and we will provide that protection. For me, that's enough. We gave our word. So I implore the President to make it very clear to Prime Minister Maliki. I implore the President to share the letter that nearly 40 of us, Republicans and Democrats, national security experts, former CIA directors, political figures, diplomats sent to the President a couple days ago, and make it very clear, Mr. President, that this is not a partisan issue in the United States of America, this is about Americans who have come together to support a group of men and women who have relied on America's promise to keep them safe and to ensure that they would be evacuated from Iraq. And after 10 years, we have not lived up to that promise. Show him the letter, Mr. President, and remind him of America's resolve and remind him of our commitment to our word. Mr. President, somebody asked me earlier today, 
how do you balance the interest of working with Iraq and the interest of the United States? Before we worry about balancing the interest of Iraq, Mr. President, I say we worry about America's interest, our credibility. We have to keep our word. This has been a painful process for everybody around the world, but our frustration, our anger, our disappointment, and our pain will never, ever, ever match those of the men and women in Camp Ashraf and Camp Liberty. If you think about how much they trusted us and how we have failed to live up to the promise, your stomach should be tied in knots. And you just kind of wonder, you have to wonder yourself, if we don't keep our word, what is the rest of the world to think? And I dare say, Prime Minister Maliki, when you keep those promises, it'll be a much warmer welcome. And to your editorial that you said America must have patience with us, for some Americans on both sides of the aisle, those who signed the letter and many more who would have signed the letter that we sent to President Obama a couple of days ago, we run out of patience, Prime Minister Maliki. Free the hostages. Secure their, se secure their safety while they're in liberty. Make sure there's a safe evacuation. And then, and then perhaps, we'll demonstrate a little more patience to you. You cannot be a friend of America and continue to violate your promise to America. Take that back, Take that back to Iraq with you, Prime Minister. Thank you very much.